when uh, Rams okay. keep, you know, keep it a little bit there was keep established on the or, or reconnected and in his deserving place okay. where he was born. So thanks to all those devotees who worked very hard to make this a reality. And I understand the next project is to get Krishna back at his place. <laughs> No, I just want to say that, like most of you have been living in Canada for some time now, and we know how sensitive the issue is with our indigenous people, and how they have been abused, you know, for a few hundred years in this country, in their land, which they kept very clean, pristine, and not contaminated, uh, like our industrialists, you know, for the, the Industrial Revolution. We made kind of a mess of our planet, but our indigenous native folks never did that. In fact, they were quite well welcoming to our uh, people who came over that needed help, namely the European stock. So in the same way, um, the way I see it is that people who follow the Vedic culture, you are the indigenous people. And, you know, the world needs to know a little bit about what the history is and we have every right to regain that uh, ability that stands to to serve again. So I'm just going to say a few things about Ram. And I'd like to open up with some opening prayers. We always start with mantras. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militanyena Tasvai Sri Gurveinama Now we'll do a couple of mantras and if you can follow after me, word by word. <clears throat> Nama, Nama. Om, Om, Vishnu, Padaya, Krishna, Prashtaya, Bhutale, Srimadhe, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swamin, Iti, Namine, Namaste, Saraswati, Deve, Gaura, Vani, Pracharine, Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Pastyatya, Desha, Karine, Jaya, Sri, Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhara, Srivas, Adi, Gaura, Bhakta, Vrinda, Hare, Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. Thank you very much. I know some drummers were ganging up on me. So we, we will chat in a few minutes. First of all, again, thank you very much for being part of this wonderful experience today. 
and also for the many days and weeks and months to come for this beautiful travel. Um, uh, I, I, we know that Ramachandra himself, he did a lot of footwork. He did a lot of traveling. He was also a walking, maybe not monk, but a grihastha. And he is a supreme personality of God and he can do anything, you know. But he decided to walk. I'll do a little plug-in for walking. We know you can drive a car. We know you can be in a plane. You can go on horseback. You can do all these many modes of travel. You can even canoe right across Canada if you want with a little portaging. But when you're walking, it's really special. Many experts have said that when you walk, it, you know, I guess, opens up some chakras, but opens up your brain. You're more active. You're the most creative. The best ideas come from when you're walking. And all the great saints and sages in the past have gone on their feet. And it brings you closer to the Supreme Lord, as opposed to being in a car. Now, for practical reasons, we use automobiles. But whenever you get a chance, instead of watching the you know, big TV screen, just go for a nice walk, and you'll see beautiful sights and sounds. Good. I mean, um, <clears throat> I did write a book about my walking experiences. I have a couple of copies available. But now I'm just ready to release a book on poems that I wrote. Here's one, or at least part of one. And it's called Ram. Ram, here it is. And it's in English. Ram possesses all the qualities of a superhero. Royal traits of ultimate prince, monarch, or pharaoh. Reverend to all, eager to help and listen, with a service attitude, acting on what's given. His build is admirable, countenance grave, tasks he tackles meant only for the brave. He never moves suddenly at a reckless whim. No wonder his father, Dasara, the emperor, adores him. Ram is a heartthrob for many a woman. He also has a striking brother with the name Lakshman. Of all ladies, lovely Sita won Ram in a tournament. These three leave an indelible mark, a footprint, literally so, on a forest floor at Chitrakut. In a fateful exile, they meet an ogress, Sripanaka, not cute. Smitten with desire, the ogress solicits Ram. He declares loyalty, however, not yielding to this love bomb. This invokes a fury in the lustful jungle lady who attacks Sita, for all she does is shady. Lakshman draws his dagger, making a clean cut. Off comes nose and ears, disfiguring her somewhat. The wounded ogress flees to gain retaliation. 14,000 aggressive ogres assail, adding aggravation. Ram single-handedly put their lives to completion. The ogress reaches her cannibal king, Ravan, to petition. In revenge, this ten-headed villain uses tri trickery and hoax. A mystic becomes a golden deer who goes to coax fair Sita away from the guard of her husband. Robin's plot triumphs, stealing Sita, Ram's diamond, to Isle, which island? Lanka. He flies with captive Sita by his side. Devastated is Ram with his love companion denied. A vulture, a bear, a... <laughs> A monkey offers solace as allies they pledge to regain the goddess. Battles are conflicts to avoid, if possible, when negotiations fail with bridges not crossable. Speaking of bridges, monkey, what is his name? Hanuman cleared the ocean with one leap to Lanka on the strength of rhymes with the ocean. Strength of 
Devotion. Crossing a new causeway, now the means to go, is a simian or monkey army wielding weapons. For Rob, it's a bow. Oh, very good. No, just go. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't rock. A clash between mean man, that's Robin, and monkey is a fierce fight. Casualties are plenty as all exhibit such might. Very good. The turning point. A fatal arrow hits Robin's navel. The only bodily location Rom finds unstable. The ten-headed fiend's legion is completely defeated. But well, what now of Sita? Has her life been depleted? All this while, it appears Sita's in captivity in a grove of Ashoka trees devoid of festivity. Surprisingly, the goddess in despair is a mere phantom, putting a twist to the story interesting to fathom. When Sita was abducted, she prayed to which god? The fire god. He gave her protection. For this, we must yeah. applaud. Okay. Then an illusory Sita was suddenly manifest. The joke was on Ravan, who thought he had the best. But then we wonder, did Ram too get tricked? The drama plays out, so emotions can be gripped. Ram, Sita, who else? Lakshman, and a 14-year ordeal. Hanuman joins. They return home to where? Yeah. yeah, not Milton. To reveal. <laughs> More divine and sweet past Time. times of a mystical kind. Tales of Ram are for a happy heart and happy mind. mind. Thank you very much. All the pastimes of Ram, we hear as uh, we give credit to Valmiki uh, Mooney, uh, who uh, made sure that this was scribed out. The tales are there, and then later on, other luminaries like Tulsi Das uh, also gave us some insights, details about Ram's pastimes, and they are important to us. Just like you see, everybody would love to go to see Netflix. Uh, superheroes, people killing each other, all the some or other we love watching people get killed. And, you know, and but we also something about superheroes that's very unique. The modern day superheroes such as what what is it? Uh, Aquaman, uh, Batman, a Superman, a Spider Man, uh, what other bands do we have? A few. Okay. They all go and they just try to help people who are in distress. That's their main objective, you know. Those that need protection, they get it from the superheroes. So that is a very popular theme. You know, I oftentimes wonder, I do, I not only walk, I also fly in planes. And I sometimes get up and I see, I go to the washroom and say, oh, what's everybody watching? And it's all about superheroes and you know, fast car races and guns everywhere and explosions and the Statue of Liberty, you know, all these kind of things are going on. People seem to love action films. films. So stories are like that. They always were uh, the love of a community. The Mahabharata, of course, is one of the great epics and the Ramlila as well. The themes are good against evil. The uh, themes are in both the the epical tales, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, it has to do with a woman being dishonored in, in both cases. The Rupadi in the Mahabharata, Sita in the Ramayana, you see? And so the whole world gets involved in trying to retaliate or give her honor back. You know, it's, it's an interesting theme and it is a storyline that follows throughout uh, you know, the history of mankind, doesn't matter what culture you're coming from. Um, so that's a been very interesting observation. Uh, the story of Ram is very simple. The story of the, in the Mahabharata is a little more complicated. And the Mahabharata also is a little bit more, let's say, intense and complex in the sense that 
our very prime book of <laughs> philosophy, the Bhagavad Gita, is a component of the Mahabharata. Now Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita, and he also there's references to Ram in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in case you're wondering, is there a connection here because Ram appeared in the Treta Yuga, Krishna appeared at the end of the Dwapara Yuga, before this Kali Yuga. We happen to live in this wretched time called Kali Yuga. It's a pretty bad, it's a rotten, stinky age. <laughs> but we make the most of it, we make the best of it. So for instance, um, in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, there's some descriptions of the two uh, camps at war. There's the Kauravas and the Pandavas, right? So on the Pandava side, we have, um, we have Arjuna. And he has a beautiful chariot. And Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is uh, driving that chariot. And I often wonder, like when I go to India, how is it possible that all these cars being driven by people don't crash into each other? <laughs> Once in a while they do. And I think it's because they get the blessings of God, Krishna, who is the original first cab driver. <laughs> so anyways, uh, on the, there, a kapitwaj means the flag, which uh, has the symbol of Hanuman on it. So there you see this Vedic connection is there. Even though there's thousands of years difference between Krishna Leela and Ram Leela, there, that connection is there. There's other uh, mentions. Chapter 4, Aimang Vivaspati Yogam, Brotahan Aham Aviyam, Vivaswan Maneveha Mahar, Manur Ikshvakave Bravit. So there it is mentioned that Ikshvaku, he follows in the Raghu dynasty, the dynasty of Ram, which is the Sun dynasty. And so it's mentioned that Krishna, who spoke the Bhagavad Gita long ago to the Sun God, that information was transmitted to Manu the father of mankind. Manu then in turn, through this chain of you know dissemination, presents it to Ikshvaku, and Ikshvaku is one of the ancestors that we find in the Raghu dynasty. So that's another reference. There's also, Ram is mentioned as the great warrior uh, in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, also Janak, uh, he is the uh, father of Sita. So that is also, he's also mentioned as a, a great role model. So we have this sort of you know, cross-sectional uh, identities or items that would put Ram and Krishna together. And by the way, you probably notice what mantra is our favorite. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In my travels, especially across Canada, I had the great fortune to um, uh, get into yoga studios, and they were always happy to hear from us. And uh, uh, it didn't matter, I, the last walk I did, uh, I started off on the East Coast, and right from the very you know, Atlantic coast, right up to the Pacific coast, um, I had that good fortune to speak at yoga studios. And you know, yoga folks, you know, it's mostly the Western crowd, and usually it's more the women than the men. Uh, they, they love kirtan, and, and they love to hear about Vedic culture. Some of them, are they get a little bit beyond stretching their bodies and uh, going for pranayam and, and appeasing their mind. They go beyond that, and they like kirtan. Some of them, they love to put a Ganesh somewhere, and not just Buddha, but Ganesh. Some of them like Krishna, and they love kirtan. They love to hear the stories about the walking. Uh, but uh, And we give them different mantras to chant. Uh, usually, uh, my presentations are like this. They want to hear about the walking experiences, how many times a bear has been chasing you, and all that kind of stuff. And we do have stories like that. It's in the book. <clears throat> but they also like to uh, hear a little bit the philosophy, you know, the philosophy of what the Vedanta offers. Uh, I'll give you a few hints of what we're talking about here. In the Vedas we say uh, something that's very profound, very simple, and very penetrating. We say we are not these bodies, we are spirits. That's our identity. And while it's important to say, I come from the culture of Ram, we have to remember one thing. 
if you say that, you should act it, right? Say, I'm a proud Hindu. Okay, then be, act like one, right? And then uh, things like that. Uh, people of the yoga tradition, whether they're, you know, it doesn't matter their skin color, they all identify somehow with India, you know, and with Ram and so on. They don't know too much oftentimes about who is Ram and Krishna. That's why we're there. That's why we walk out there to meet them and tell them a little bit more about the Supreme Lord who comes in the form of Ram and, uh, and Balaram. There's several Rams in our culture, by the way. There's Parashuram, and Jayadev Goswami popularized the Das Avatar, and then we find this Parashuram, there's Balaram, and there's Ram, okay? So Ram pops up all over the place, you know? Um, on the, my first day of walking uh, in, in, uh, in British Columbia, it was 1996, you know, I saw you know, somebody had a truck, Ram, you know? And so that's very auspicious. If you uh, see a uh, uh, Bolarama, you know, that might remind you of God. If you go to the Landarama, you know, to do your laundry, Ram's name is in there. And of course, there's a motto of trucks called Ram or Ram. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The name of God is found everywhere. And, you know, anytime you get a chance to be reminded of the Supreme Lord, it's of great benefit to us and great fortune. So um, we love the tale of Ram. It's about heroes and heroines. It's about, uh, you know, like say, nasty people and very divine people, very extreme kind of characters. And it's just fun to watch. My personal favorite, I love when Shupanaka, she comes and approaches Ram and he teases her a little bit. Oh, who are you, uh, divine lady? said, well, I am, you know, I'm looking for someone. <laughs> Basically said, well, that's not me, says Ram, because you see, I am already betrothed. This is my lovely Sita, and I'm very loyal to her. And she doesn't like that. <clears throat> because she, as soon as she set eyes on him, she was immediately attracted. That's a real man, yeah. right? And so then uh, Ram teases her a little bit, and he says, well, you know, but my brother here, my brother here is a little younger to me, and uh, he's actually available. He's single, and so you might uh, give that a consideration. So she instead of flirting with Ram, he starts flirting with Lakshman, and then Lakshman very quickly has to act. He gets a little embarrassed, and he says, oh, well, uh, you see, I'm just a slave. I'm a servant here, you know, and you want to be married to a slave. Do you really? So they start yucking it up a little bit. Ram and, uh, and Lakshman, and she picks up on this and says, oh, these guys are making fun of me. Oh, if I can only get rid of Sita, then I can have both of them. That was her mentality, right? So she goes like a vampire or a Dracula type person. She goes for the juggler vein of Sita, but uh, Ram and Lakshman act very fast. And it's like we, we read here, Lakshman very quickly moves and pulls out his dagger, his sword, and makes a few clean cuts. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, beautiful stories. We also credit our Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, who came to the West in 1965, and he told us about the story of Ram. He told us about many things. He was telling the Westerners how you could worship Ram, what to do on those days. Of course, there's fast, there's a half-day fast on Ram Nomi. It was a full day of fasting for Krishna right up until midnight. And uh, that's one way to celebrate these great personalities. And uh, there's Diwali, of course. How many people celebrated Diwali not so long ago with the lamps and so on like that? Yeah, and uh, you know, there, there are many ways to show appreciation to Ram. But one thing that really makes Ram happy is when we recite his name. Not just at events like this, but if we can make it a daily habit to glorify Ram, to glorify Krishna, and Hare, what's Hare all about? Hare refers to Radharani, the joy of Krishna. Yes, <clears throat> I first heard the Mahamantra from a Broadway production called Hair. That's H-A-I-R, not as in H-A-R-E, or as in Hare Krishna. 
No. There was a Broadway production that came out in 1967, Summer of Love, I believe, and it defined the 60s when people were kind of open. And in the West, the people were very open to hear about what India has to offer. They were very open about cannabis and smoking marijuana. And Prabhupada explains that the idea came from India, truly. And wearing Indian clothes, Nehru College, and, and sandals from India, and burning incense to cover up the marijuana smoke, etc., etc., you know. And then Ravi Shankar came along, the virtuoso for sitar, and uh, he sort of opened up the doors in one way musically for India. Westerners were looking at India for the first time in a very honorable way, not with the intent to steal or to take the diamonds and the precious jewels off of the uh, murtis of Krishna and so on like that. They were having a genuine interest. In and uh, <clears throat> I guess Indian tea, uh, my, one of my favorites, Bengali spice. <laughs> and uh, so it's uh, it's nice to see that the East and the West can come together like this. And of course, people love Indian food as long as there's not too many sharks in the sub <laughs> You know what I mean by sharks? Those red things with the little thingy at the end. It looks like a shark's fin. You know, yeah, as long as we're not too oily. You know, as long as the food is sattvic, right? Actually, if you want to advance spiritually, we have to look at how we dress, we have to look at what we use, what we eat, and at our whole lifestyle. And so eating is one of those big deals, it makes a difference. And uh, you know, so to go the lifestyle of being sattvic as opposed to rajas and tamas, I mean, this is a very interesting subject. The Bhagavad Gita talks about the three gunas all over the place. The whole Bhagavad Gita, also in Prabhupada's purports of the Bhagavad Gita, he keeps bringing up, Krishna keeps bringing up the three gunas. So if you're not familiar with Vedic culture or Vedic philosophy, uh, you know, the tattva of what the Vedas have to offer, then you don't know that there's these three energies. So it's a good idea to get familiar with the contents of the Bhagavad Gita, study these energies, then you have a better choice. Most people oftentimes say, everything's good, you're good, I'm cool, you're cool, I'm okay, you're okay. But according to the Bhagavad Gita, you might be okay, but you might be okay living in your misery. Or you might be okay living a life that's sattvic or dharmic, right? So we are encouraged to live by dharma. It's a very key word. It's a catchy phrase. Dharma is really important. It was a few years ago. Some people on the West Coast, they started this uh, food chain called McDharmas, you know, and they were, you know, it was like a reaction to eating the bad stuff, you know, the, the animals and so on like that, right? So that's something we want to try to avoid. Something, you want to please Krishna, we want to please Ram, then we avoid, you know, eating these kind of nasties, you know, just stay away, even from chicken, I hate to say but leave those beautiful birds alone. They deserve to live. If you want to have, be a chicken, be a fox. You know, and then do it the right way. And you won't get any karma. But if you're a human being, and you eat these animals, you will get some karma, for sure. Next life, be a fox, or a tiger, or whatever like that. This is how karma works. Uh, if you follow dharma, then there won't be any karma especially when you follow Sanatana Dharma. So that means acting appropriately, especially in the sattvic category, and also doing what pleases Krishna, what pleases Rama. Okay. Lakshman, such an illuminary character, he was sold out to his brother, not just because he was a brother, but because uh, he, he was the supreme personality. See the same thing. Uh, Sita just happened to be the consort of Ram, but she was actually serving the Supreme Lord and so many other people in Ayodhya. And one way, even Ravana was serving Ram because the Lord likes to have a good fight once in a while. Just like we like to be a little competitive 
and we get like a little bit of a rush from that. So uh, therefore the Lord makes some arrangement that there will be a bad ass guy. Can I say that? Bad ass? People say it all over the place. And ass is okay. They're donkeys. Okay. You know? And, uh, and he, he arranges it so that there can be some combat and some opportunity for dealing with struggle, but then coming out victorious in the end. That's the beautiful thing about Ron. He came out victorious in the end. There's many facets to his Leela, his pastime. They're all very endearing, and they're all a lot of fun. I'm going to, we've been talking about Hanuman, and I'll read one more poem for you. Then I promised you some, uh, we will do a little kirtan, if that's okay. All right? I've got something called Hanuman here. So if you chant Hare Krishna and Hare Rama, you, you can do the mantra. I'll be able to find it faster. Okay. How about everyone together? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. You gotta chant more sincerely. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Sorry to disappoint you, I can't find it. That's why I wrote a book, so everything is organized in an index. And I, don't have this. And I, I wrote my place like this, okay? But I can do a little substitute if you like. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm totally embarrassed. Uh, here, I will... Uh, do something that's a little bit more another level, which is very relevant. It's called uh, Loose Tongue Monster, and it's about gossip. Is that relevant? We don't gossip. We don't, do we? Okay, we don't. Okay, so here we go, and then we'll do some kirtan, and we'll finish by 5.45, right? She not for thank you very much. Okay, gossip, here it is. Gossip is the cowardly, unofficial occupation of a jerk. <laughs> Volunteers are either on part or full-time work. <laughs> Call it a toxic tongue, a plague worse than a pandemic, a dirty and dark behind-the-back dynamic, a casual chat where the truth is not confirmed, a devil's radio broadcasting something not to be learned. Uh, gossipy people have nothing of substance to say. Fabrications from their mouth are always on display. It's a syndrome, a condition of verbal diarrhea. They are rumor addicts like alcoholics on tequila. Now, in the Ram Leela, people were talking about gossiping him, and he once, you know, he kind of went incognito dressed as an ordinary civilian, went out to see what are people saying. And there's a lot of gossip going on in Iyoga at the time. They were making uh, remarks against him and Sita. So he was very disturbed by that. Do take note that those who gossip to you will inevitably and eventually gossip about you. And those who know so little about you, I'm being sarcastic here, suddenly became authority having all the goods on you. <laughs> Perhaps the greatest human offender is the gossiper, though feeling their contribution has the status of a philosopher. Little do they know that gossip, a lethal weapon, will act karmically as if to beckon, like a boomerang, 
that's suddenly released and comes back to haunt and strike like a beast. Last paragraph. So stay away from this backstabbing game. Stay away from fault finders who bear no shame. Stay away from loose tongue monsters of derision and hold hands with folks who have some vision, all right? A superior investment to being critical is to point out the good in an individual. Don't let that big, fat mouth try to obstruct two good listening ears poised to reconstruct. Any hope for a rumor monger, perhaps, is our deep prayer, a call for a miracle, compassion, and help on a major repair. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hey. Thank you very much. Are you, which, which Madunga are you going to play? Okay, that'd be a good idea. I'll just take this right off. Thank you. Can I just drink for a minute? <laughs> <clears throat> we'll keep it really simple, which is Jai Radha Madhava, our Guru Mara, Srila Prabhupada always chanted that uh, before he'd speak, but we're doing it reverse.